This is the Voice of the Land podcast with your hosts, Kevin Arnold and Nick Paulus. As soon as the Browns season ended, all the talk switched to what do they need to do to take the next steps to be a true championship contender? And boy, has Andrew Barry answered the call and then some focusing on the defense. We will get into all of the Browns offseason moves and be joined by a special guest, Matt Fontana from ESPN Cleveland in just a little bit to talk about the Browns offseason. And we will also look at UFC 260 with our man from Cleveland, Stipe Miocic, in the heavyweight bout against Francis Naganu. And we'll end the show Looking at our brackets and how busted they probably are for all of us. We'll get into all of that here in just a few moments, but you are tuned in to The Voice of Land. Welcome, everyone that is tuned in live right now, or if you're watching on replay throughout the week, tuning into the audio as well. Welcome to another edition of The Voice of Land. I am one of your hosts, Kevin Arnold. Alongside me, as always, my brother, Nick Paulus, and our producer extraordinaire behind that proverbial glass, Peter Tellup. We are a Big Play production partnered with the Big Play Network, also partnered with LPV Productions. You can always tune into the show on our Twitter page at VTL underscore pod. Give us a follow there. We want to thank all of our new followers. We have really risen over the last few weeks, I guess. Paulus, uh, Twitter reached out to you with how many followers we were getting in a short amount of time that it, it, we had to re-sign in. They, they, they did. They were uh, they were a little skeptical, so mm. we had to re-sign in. We had to get a new password. It was a whole you know whole lot of things. But uh, thank you for everyone uh, following us, and you know obviously we're going to follow you back. So yep. Follow for a follow. You know, we'll follow back. Follow for a follow, basically out there. So appreciate everybody tuning in there. You can also find us on Facebook at Voice of Land. Hit the like button there. We'll go live on there. Or we're always on Big Play's Facebook page as well or their YouTube page at Big Play Live. You want to tune in our YouTube page. I don't know that we've really done much with it recently, though. The YouTube, you know what? We have started going away from that just because yeah. it's so much easier to do everything via Twitter and Facebook. And I, I mean, we're, we're out there. We, we are. are. And, and we probably will start using YouTube a little bit more, you know, as time goes on. It, YouTube is fantastic it for is. like the little clips. It is. You're throwing those out there, you know, getting the little, what are they called? The vignettes. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. is that, you know, so I'm um, surprised I got that one right <laughs> shooting from the hip on that one uh but yeah no that youtube's fantastic yeah. for that sort of stuff so maybe we'll start doing that again yeah, maybe tiktok too you know if maybe spo- if sponsors are open hey, you know, we're open to that hey, so phone lines dms open no for some sponsors you really want to see some tiktok we, we have some potential sponsors oh, you know oh. linking up with us all you know on the dl here for us right now the, that'll oh. come back to us a little bit later but as uh, as one of the big names in the industry says no name Names, please. No names, please. No names, please. Don't want to steal it. I'll give credit. I will say his name. Tony Rizzo. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> but other than that, no names, please, for that. But you can follow us across the board on social media. Of course, reach out to us. You can tweet at us during the show or during the week, have sports conversations, tweet at us directly. You want to talk to Paulus at CLE underscore Paulus and myself at Kevin and Seven because, you know. I always come through when it matters most in the clutch. <laughs> and, of course, with Peter Tellup, LPV Productions can be found across all social media sites. As we said, you can always tune in to the pod, uh, basically the podcast format, the audio format of the show on all your major podcast platforms. And we would be remiss if we didn't thank our sponsor for the show, the one we can name right now, DP Construction LLC. Reach out to them for all your concrete construction needs. Reach out to them by phone, 330-217-4999. That is 330-217-4999. Reach out to Tyler LaFrada directly by email, tylerlafrada at gmail.com, or hit up their Facebook page, DP Construction LLC. Send them a message, and they'll get you a quote for all those concrete projects you have to get done around the house. And Uncle Steve will come out, get that work done, and I'm sure Tyler will make sure he gets out there. And you can see all those beautiful pictures on Facebook. Oh, Tyler will put him to work. He puts him to work. <laughs> no, no doubt. Does Tyler no. put himself to work? Yeah, yeah. Tyler, yeah, Tyler hops in. I, you yeah. know, he hops one of his boots on. You know, yeah, yeah, every once in a while. I just want to make sure that people know because I think sometimes we, you know, we really 
iterate the fact that Uncle Steve is doing d- does a lot of work. You know, like Uncle hands Steve on. Steve does a. You know what? Like to be a hundred percent real, because I used mm. to work with Steve all the time. I was on his crew, and you know, yeah, obviously Tyler and I, you know, best friends growing up. Uh, growing up, so I, I've I've worked with Steve before. He is the hardest worker, pound for pound, the hardest worker in the entire world. No doubt about it. That dude, mm. I mean, goes to beds, you know, thinking about concrete. <laughs> so like, <laughs> if if he's doing your driveway mm-hmm. patio piece, anything like yeah. that. He's you're in great hands. You great absolutely hands. are. Great hands. So reach out to those guys, DP Construction LLC. And reminder, you want your Voice of Land gear, hit up voiceland.com, drop down menu, hit up the shop, and you can get your t-shirts, your mugs, the hat. Still in the works. You know, I got the stimmy, but I had to kind of, you know, like I said, save that money a little bit, putting that money towards towards good smart use. Smart move, smart move. Good use. So, you know. We got a couple big shows coming up tonight. Next week, we'll get into that towards the end of the show, kind of preview that moving forward, and then maybe a couple weeks off with the Easter holiday coming up, something we've kind of talked about. So, you know, in April, there'll be new headwear, headgear for myself. <laughs> so don't worry. that The hat is coming. I'm going to sport it. You want one, hit up the shop, voiceland.com. But as we said... Tonight, we want to talk Browns, we want to talk UFC 260, and we will be joined at 7.15, just under 10 minutes here, by Matt Fontana from ESPN Cleveland. We want to get the conversation rolling, though, and really look at the Browns, because that is the hot topic right now in this city of Cleveland and everything Andrew Barry has done. You look at some of the moves that Andrew Barry has made. He's signed John Johnson III to a three-year, $33.75 million deal. Also added cornerback depth with Troy Hill. Yeah. Both from the Rams defense and a defense that was rated, I believe, was number one. It was number one. Number total one defense, yeah. Number one total defense in the NFL, and that secondary was on point for the for the Rams. Troy Hill, the cornerback, getting a four-year, $24 million deal. Some other uh, one-year deals. Tack McKinley, formerly of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, Anthony Walker of the Colts, Darius Leonard, who we think is there. Raised him. Who we think, like Darius Leonard, that's like the name you recognize from that defense. But him and a lot of those, a lot of Anthony Walker's teammates, they kind of shed light that Walker was more of the kind of the the unsung hero and the leader in that locker room. So, and nothing but great things to say. They weren't prompted or anything to to make the videos thanking him or anything. I mean, Darius Leonard went on like a Twitter rant. I mean, like it was like five different tweets of him going like, damn, the Browns got a good one. I can't believe he's gone. You know, like, you know, he's a true difference in the locker room. That's the type of people that we, you know, the Browns, of all teams, right. the Cleveland Browns are bringing in that sort of veteran leadership. Once again, what were you preaching? Veteran leadership. Veteran <laughs> leadership, especially on that defensive side. I mean, that is such a key thing because mm-hmm. we loaded up the past couple of years offensively. And once again, you and I have talked about this Super Bowl bound offense, but it was a mediocre defense uh, alongside Miles Garrett, you know, top three, five right. pass rusher, you know, in the league. And then, and then you have Denzel on the back end, but you need other, you know, there's nine other spots on the defense and we didn't have really anyone out there to really fill those gaps. And uh, I mean, fantastic job so far. You're getting veteran leadership, but young veteran leadership. Look at a guy like John Johnson. Yeah. The thing about him is not he's just like that he's 27, a, tw- yeah. 25, maybe something. He, he's, he's young. like 25 or 26, I think, going yeah. into this year. And the thing about him isn't just that he's a great safety. He is. He was the vocal leader. He was the one calling out the plays for that Rams defense. Right. And someone that was very – had a lot of football IQ and someone that a lot of the guys in that locker room, while he was younger – looked to for answers and someone that was willing to and even said in his press conference i'm willing to share what i've seen with others and then those conversations just become more open locker room and it just makes for a better culture and so you're getting smart talented veteran leadership to continue adding to your culture but also improving and adding depth to a defense that's sorely sorely needed it last season you can't stop chad henny on third and 14 you, 
you know that the, I think that <laughs> yeah. If Andrew Barry wasn't thinking defense already, that was the that was the that's nail the in the go-to. coffin. Yeah, that's, that's the nail in the coffin. That's exactly what it was. That's what it was. So we'll get it. We'll kind of break down some of these you know moves a little bit more specifically with Fontana here in just a little bit. But the question I want to pose out to everybody watching, whether again live or on replay or listening. And to both of you guys is with these moves and kind of the the praise that this team is getting nationally for how smart they are being, adding, bringing these guys in, but also planning for their future as well for this upcoming season. What Andrew Barry has done, has that changed your expectation for what the 2021 Brown season is going to be even this early in the off season in March right. when we haven't even gone through the draft yet. Well, just a brief recap. Uh, I, I was checking out CBS NFL football mm-hmm. uh, here for us. You know, they had the notable moves, you know, once again, all the people that you just reiterated, John Johnson, uh, Tack McKinley, Troy Hill, Malik Jackson, re-signing Higgs, which by the way, welcome back Hollywood. Yep. I didn't think you were coming back because I knew that they were going to lowball you <sighs> on that offer. It was a 2 million, you no dollar deal, yeah. which last year, well, to be fair, it is it is a you know, it is pay a increase because he was only making nine hundred thousand. But deserves well, more. Tank. Absolutely, he did at least triple. He, I mean, don't you think he deserves at least six million a year? I I do, but this this dude is so Cleveland that I know like, he's it's, just he he's willing to keep coming back. Thank no. you, Andrew Andrew Barry. Thank you, Hollywood. Yeah, uh, I, God, yeah. God bless you, Hollywood, for for coming back because I guarantee you he was getting way better deals on the open market out there. So you know. Congrats on you know him coming back, but once again CBS Football uh, came out and they said you know somehow they got Johnson, one of the top young safeties on the market, at great value. Finally, Cleveland has itself a playmaking leader in the in its back end of its secondary. Tack McKinley is just a, is just as fine of an upside flyer too. Uh, Hill helps solidify the secondary as well. They gave you know mm. a, a grade scale. They mm. gave us an A. So and and you know what I'm going to be honest with you I 100% agree with them because I think that the way that we have this all set up right now what's the one thing that we needed defense mm-hmm. you know and, and veteran leadership you yeah. know at, at that as well I just think it's such a great move you know what what Andrew Barry's been doing I mean honestly you know GM of the offseason I know that there's a mm. you know GM of the year we'll we'll see how you know the year goes for the Browns but I originally said I wasn't sure if they could make it to the Super Bowl, you know, because mm-hmm. of the, uh, of that uh, defense and yeah. everything like that. But with all of those pickups and potentially getting greedy back, uh, getting Grant Delpit, we're going to run that three deep safety look yeah. uh, there for us, and, and we'll just have probably Grant playing like center field out there. That's awesome. I I finally think that if if we have a healthy year and you can't predict injuries or anything like that, no. you know, but I think if everyone's healthy and plays to their potential, this is without a doubt a top two team in the in the AFC at least. Peter, your expectation: where was it before the new league year started and these signings started to come down the pipe, and where are they now? Have they changed? Well, you know. We talked about before. We obviously needed a lot of help on the defense, right? And I'm I'm very happy with what I've seen so far. Sure, um, but you know I I'm kind of holding back because yeah, while I'm happy, you know it goes to the title of the show. You know, hey, off season it looks great. I got to see these guys in the game because it's fair, you know. Mm-hmm. But I really do like the moves they're making, and I think that we're getting to the point where this is exactly what we need. This is the kind of uh, leadership we need from the front office. They're putting the right pieces in place. And I think we're really going to make it, um, you know, I, th- I think we're really going to make a good run into the postseason next year. Yeah. And I'm crossing my fingers and trying not to get ahead of well, myself because it's easy. It, right. right. Well, it's easy. It's easy to, you know, get a little too excited. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, and that's what happened a couple of years ago. That there was so much off-season hype yeah. for this team, and we kind of really bought into it. Last year, we talked about how you got to prove it on the field, and I'm still there. Yeah, but the expectations have risen, and you can't just be happy with, oh, we finally made the playoffs because that's gone. You've gotten rid of that, and it's time to move on. Yep. At this time, we do want to bring in our friend of show and mentor. 
here, Matt Fontana, ESPN Cleveland Tonight, host of ESPN Cleveland Tonight, weeknights from 5 to 7 on ESPN Cleveland. Matt, how you doing tonight? Welcome to the show. Are those brackets busted for you? <laughs> it, I, it didn't matter. I didn't fill one out. So oh. I had uh-huh. one, I think, in our uh, in our company pool that was for free. So if, if you've listened to the show, I, I hate March Madness. I Brackets <laughs> cause you more pain then they do happiness and especially now when there's none left there's not even a single perfect one left uh it's uh, as you can hear my dog in the background he, his bracket's <laughs> gone too he didn't he, his his is busted too so yeah uh it's nice when you don't have to worry about it because i didn't have to worry about any uh any money missing no, yeah, no, that that's fantastic right there. I can guarantee you my bracket is done. I had Illinois as the everyone's champ. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, ev- everyone's yeah. is gone. So I had Illinois, and then I think I had Ohio State going to, like, the Elite Eight. So We all did. Yeah, right. that's the thing. Like, you're fried. <laughs> right. So it's like, you know, you're like, okay. And I think, you know, the nice thing is the sentimental. We all had Ohio winning, you know, so that we was did. nice. Yeah. And you were like, okay, that's kind of a payoff. Cleveland State, not so much. But it was like, you know, at least we got one. But, yeah, brackets cause you more pain than they do happiness. That's a fact. And you know Janice from accounting who had her grandkids fill it out to the company pool anyway. So it's like, it is what it is. Choosing the colors and everything like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt. Well, you know, uh, Duke, well, Duke didn't even make it, right. but it's like, oh, uh, uh, Arizona was good like 10 years ago. I'm sure they're still good. Yeah, yeah. yeah is Adam man, Morrison still, still with Gonzaga? Yeah, yeah right. let's go yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fontana, have you heard the story of uh, the one bracket pool I entered, like how I lost to a seven year old that year? Like I took no. second or third place. Yeah. Because the I entered basically two of my family friends, they always did like a family pool together. And one year they decided to let me join because I had no other bracket pool to join in. And, and the seven year old, like the youngest one in one of the families won because they just picked on color. Like, like you were talking. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's how it's going to go, because like. I, like I said, the, the frustrating thing is not necessarily that you lost, but then a lot of people out there legit like sat down and were like, all right, I'm going to look at these stats. I'm going to look, you know, at this. I got to look, you know, defense of this, deep offense of that. Yeah. It just didn't work. That's this guy. That That's me. That, <laughs> I've, I've tried to get away from that. Deep and dives my, and you still end up fifth out of five. So, yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that, know, that's how it like, always goes. And, and that's the thing. That's and, that, and I get why that's March Madness and everybody says like, oh, that's what I love about the tournament. And I, and I trust me, I understand. Like, I, I do believe that people enjoy that element of it yeah but there is something where you're like do you enjoy it or it cost you money you know because that's not an enjoyable part of it so it's like it could go either way but yeah um you can't have it both ways you can't have your bracket busted and be so happy that underdogs made it and then also cost yourself a ton of money in the process no doubt no doubt yeah about a week away from turning that 30 corner so i'm trying to get wiser in my ears <laughs> there you go <laughs> we are joined by matt bet montana the bet the over that's my yeah always bet the over matt fontana espn cleveland is joining us tonight and fontana we are talking Browns first and their free agency. We'll get to UFC 260 in just a, just a few moments. But the question we're kind of posing tonight is with all of the moves Andrew Barry in this front office is making this offseason. Last offseason, they focused on the offense. We knew the defense was the question mark. They are focusing on it. They are trying to fill holes, at least add depth to this defense. Have your expectations at this point from where when the season ended looking at next season to right now looking at next season, have those expectations changed? I think it's a great question, guys, because actually they haven't. I had about as high as expectations as I could have had as soon as the season ended. And the beautiful part about where the Browns are finally at, it's what we've always wanted. They could have rolled the footballs out the day that we lost to the Chiefs or the day the Super Bowl ended, and I would have felt good about that team going 10 and 6, 11 and 5, and right. they're getting 17 mm-hmm. games now. But I would have felt good about that team. You're finally at a point where the draft is a luxury. It's no more we have to find the savior quarterback. We've got to find this desperate need of a position. Yeah, don't get me wrong. John Johnson and Tack McKinley and the linebackers and Troy Hill, like they're going to play in, you know, big parts of that defense and whoever we pick at 26 or whatever piece we add, it's nice because those are just like complementary pieces. Now you've got the structure of your team. You've got uh, the, the corner pieces. You've got the players that you look at and you can say, these are the guys we're building around. So I would have felt good about this team no matter what. If they'd have done absolutely nothing, 
I would have felt really good about it. The fact that they went out, they didn't get better. They added some nice pieces and, um, you know, they were, they were strategic. I know that's, it's kind of a, a buzzword when it comes to <laughs> yeah. bear right strategy and, and analytics and all that kind of stuff. But I think really took some one year flyers, just like you did last year. I'm Malik Jackson. And, and obviously with Tack McKinley, but you were able to sign, you know, John Johnson into a, a longer term deal as you see, all right, this guy's for sure going to be at a fit. And the one thing I'll say is even at a position, like let's just take safety, for example, there's a lot of positions on this team that Andrew Barry helped with, but not really, you know, extremely safety was one of the ones where he, he literally did draft Grant Delpit and traded right. mm-hmm. for Ronnie Harrison. And he still said, I'm, I need to get better. or I still want to get better. And yeah, we're going to play a lot of three safety look and we're going to be able to uh, maybe only run the two linebackers, which I like, but that's the egolessness of him just to say, even the position that I have the most direct impact on, I was still trying to get it better. I was still trying to get better people in here for uh, our position. The fact that he gave Joe Woods uh, even more options at linebacker to say, Hey, find the best guys. And and I think the there's pros and cons of that. The, the cons is you don't have the guy that, you know, all right, that guy's your starter. There's no mm-hmm. questions asked. So that's bad where it's like, okay, like that. But the good news is let Joe Woods pick the best guy, you know, or the best two guys, or literally you could Mm -hmm. see two different linebackers on three, three different plays, depending on pass run, all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, this off season was great, but you know, I'm with you guys. I think this off season was, was nice, but it was like, I I was feeling confident on this team, no matter what. You sort of saw, you know, these sort of things coming into play and everything like that. They had money to spend every, you know, everywhere like that. And once again, the one, one thing that we needed was defense <laughs> above everything else. Yes. Matt, what is your favorite offseason move so far done by Andrew Barry? You know, I got to say the John Johnson, you know, like that's the big one mm. uh, that I would yeah. say. Um, you know, Tech McKinley, I'm, o- I'm okay on again. I mean, they I'm, tried to I'm pick him te- up like five times. <laughs> I know, so. right? First time's a charm, right? It's got, eventually it'll work. I'm surprised that somebody didn't step in. Like, no, 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 we had waiver priorities. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 waiver, waiver. No, it's, it finally worked out. But, uh, you know, the McKinley thing, I, I'm, I'm really kind of lowering those expectations for me where – if he gets me double digit sacks, that'd be outstanding. You know, I, I'm going to look at it and say, can you take some pressure off miles Garrett? My biggest thing is miles is going to get double team, triple team, no matter what. So when you're one-on-one try to get there. So like him, I, I'm okay. You know, kind of lowering things. Um, yeah. You know, I got to tell you, I think it might be Troy Hill for, for the reason is I, again, I, I like greedy ones. Do sure. not get me wrong. The guy's coming off injury. He had a good rookie season not amazing. And he hadn't played football last year. A lot of people are like, Oh, just pencil him back in with Denzel. Right, like, yeah. but like that. That's a lot of well wishing. Don't get me wrong. I hope well, he you, can get there. And I think he can be, but it's like, and you can say a lot the, on that guy. And you can say the same thing about Grant Delpit. You know, everyone's oh, yeah. just pencil him as a starter. It's like, well, pump the brakes. The guy's <laughs> never seen the field. <laughs> right. He, right. He hasn't seen yeah, He hasn't stepped foot on an NFL regular season field. So to go out and, and sign a guy like Hill, where you can say he can play in, he can play out. And to maybe even like slow things down for, for, for greedy, but like, Hey man, you don't have to rush back, you know, whatever role we pick for you, just play that role. You'll be fine. We know you're attacking your rehab the best way that you can, but I guess, uh, you know, that move much, you know, like we talked about John Johnson, it's signifying that the, the team's not complacent. They're not right. just saying like, Hey, we have this guy here. We're going to, we're going to just roll with this guy here. Like, no, we're going to try to get better. And, and, you know, a little bit of that recruiting had to happen there. I don't think it's a coincidence <laughs> no that doubt. the two guys that played for the Rams all of a sudden found their way to the Browns. And going off of that, the talk kind of going the off season, a lot of us kind of giving opinions and everything. We thought that that guy opposite of Miles Garrett was going to be the focus or should be the focus of free agency. Now they've, yeah. they've given one year deals to linebackers, defensive line help, but they've invested in the back, the defensive backfield. Do you think that's more of kind of trying to get proven insurance in case the injury element still kind of hangs over their head or is there another reason that you feel Andrew Barry really wanted to invest this money more so in the defensive backfield now and possibly going with defensive line or linebacker help in the draft 
Yeah, I, I think it's got to be cash, guys. I mean, those Trey Hendrickson, I mean, I, I like people were trying to talk me into Carl Lawson on the show. And I was like, hey, man, I don't I don't know anything <laughs> about Carl Lawson. I was like, I'm, I look at the stats and I was like, the first thing that jumped out to me with Lawson was the guy had 20 sacks in four NFL seasons. I was like, that's not great. Yeah. Right. But then I heard, oh, you know, he had the quarterback hits and he had all this other kind of stuff. I'm like, OK, OK, fine. But for fifteen million dollars a year, or yeah. sixteen, or anything close to that, I was just like, eh, not really. So I think what next level general managers do is they know when the waves come. It's a lot like the draft. Like let's take the draft for example. You know when a good D line class is coming out. You know mm-hmm. when there's going to be a really good wide receiver class like this year, where it's just like stacked with wide receivers. I think they look at free agency that way and go. Mm-hmm. let's call it for what it is this D line class in the free agency class. Not great. It really wasn't. I mean, yeah, yeah. you had JJ Watt out there as a potential trade option. Um, you know, Trey Anderson had the one big year and then, you know, the pass rushers, which, you know, Hassan Reddick is a linebacker, um, you know, the Bud Dupree out there, all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. I don't think they necessarily fit with the Browns we're looking for. So I think Andrew Brady did the smart thing. Hey, that's something we did need. The price was going to be too high. Let's, you know, get McKinley here, but let's try to make some hay while we can. And yeah, I think the focus then will go back for that D line, uh, you know, four, three uh, defensive end. I think that locks it in, to be honest with you guys. I like Zayden Collins out of Tulsa as much as the next guy, but I think we're, and, 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 and uh, the linebacker on Notre Dame too. Like I really think they were in play. Yeah. Scratch that off. It's the end. It's got to be the <laughs> end uh, for this team for moving forward too. Cause even then it, tack McKinley, he comes out and gets 10 sacks. He's going to be the next Trey Hendrickson signing a $15 million per year deal and he'll be gone. So you, you got to get some depth over there. So I, I think that it, it comes from the draft, but I really think it was just, Hey, the, these guys got paid. It wasn't necessarily the best. Uh, the class out there wasn't a, a I mean, I don't want to say the word, you know, like mm. it was yeah. terrible. They were good names. I mean, there were some really good names. Buddy Pree's very, very good. There were some good names. They just got paid. And in a year where the salary cap is going to go down just this year, but it's going to it's going to skyrocket the next four years after that. And he said the smart thing, like, hey, let's not let's not for let's not shoehorn ourselves into a bad contract just for the sake of doing it. We'll, we'll address this somewhere else. Now, Fontana, do you think that they're done? Before we get into UFC 260, do you think the Browns are <laughs> – do you think they're done? Because there's only so money left. There's Yeah, there's yeah, only so much money. That's the question every day, guys, right? Like, it's I, – I, I, I keep saying no, and then they sign Anthony Walker. And then I'm like, no, 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 they're done. No, no, no. They get out and they get mm-hmm. Greg Center. Uh, Cody Parkey. I mean, I guess that <laughs> Malik Jackson. Time. Right. Yeah, yeah. Every day I'm like, no, 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 they're done. Uh, I'm with you, Nick. I think they're probably out of money at this point, but you never know. <laughs> so I'm going to say no. And then I guarantee that that's the lock of the centuries that tomorrow they will sign a guy. Oh, no doubt. I just huh. said that I'm done. Nick Chubb, uh, but, four years, 60 million. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. It's something like that. <laughs> or like, you know, I, I, one that I don't think a lot of people are talking about is the Wyatt Teller deal. I, I think there's yeah. a potential for that. Yeah. And in a situation, too, where I'm not trying to run Joel Batonio out of town, but the fact is Batonio only has two. He's only signed through two, uh, 2022, so he's got two more seasons. You know, Treader did sign that extension, the same thing. You're going to – you know, and again, I'm not – these guys are great. I'm not trying to rush them right. out. But you need to look to that next wave because mm. Baker's going to be your quarterback for the next decade plus. Yep. Jedrick Wills is going to be here much more of that than Joel Batonio. He's going to, you know, Agreed. Nick Harris is probably going to be here more than JC Treader doing that. So if they see why a teller is being uh, as good as we all thought he was and is um, that's a deal I'd sneakily kind of look at to see. And, you know, right now guard, you know, that's the, that's the crazy thing. I don't quote me on this, but I, I, I looked it up and, I think it's something like Zach Martin is is the highest paid guard out of Dallas, and he's making only well, fifteen. I, I was going to say, isn't Quentin Nelson? He, I mean, he's going to get paid. He's, he's going, going to get to. paid. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, so like, that's the thing. I, yeah. I want to get that contract in for White right, yeah. right before you yeah. know Quentin signs. So. Don't let Nelson yeah. set the market. Kind of <laughs> yeah. give give your own market to to tell her. Oh. Yeah. Matt Fontaine of ESPN Cleveland, host of ESPN Cleveland tonight, joining us. And to switch gears to something I know that you are passionate 
passionate about. And, of course, we have local flavor this coming Saturday, UFC 260. Stipe Miocic going up against Francis Ngannou. The second time these guys have met. The first time was back in 2018 when uh, Miocic won in a unanimous decision. Of course, tail of the tape, Miocic 6'4", about 233, 80-inch reach. Ngannou is about the same height, but a few pounds heavier at 260 with a few inches reach, a little bit more, 83-inch reach is what I saw. What what kind of chances do you give Miocic to kind of take this one? Is Ngannou more on a, on a better streak coming into this one, or Miocic just too powerful, too good to kind of continue to retain that belt? You know, it's crazy to say, guys, I think this might be the, the hardest test of, of Stipe's career, and that's fighting Daniel Cormier twice. That's fighting, mm-hmm. obviously, already beating Naganu, beating Alistair Overeem. Um, you know, when you go back to that first fight, everybody said that, uh, Naganu had a huge weakness and Stipe exploited it. Like that's not taking anything from Stipe. That's the fight game. If you've got a weakness, an opponent's going to find it and exploit it. And that was Stipe took him down, got him tired. You know, he talked about Naganu's height, his 265. He has to cut to make, you know, 265 because mm-hmm. he's just jacked. I mean, he is just a specimen of a human being, but a lot of muscles means a lot of oxygen and you got to go with that. And that's where Stipe beat him. And every, and every even that night when I watched that fight, that guy's going to be back. He's going to go to the drawing board. He's going to sit down with his people. He's going to find the best way. And that's exactly what happened. He's built himself back up and earned this title shot. So I'm excited. I'm sure as Stipe is to, to face an even better version of Francis Ngannou. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I think probably like you guys, I don't know if kids yet, but I, I get mm-hmm. nervous watching him fight. It's like, it's like my friend. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like yeah. family out there where I legit, I, I can barely watch the fights. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I'm just like, no, especially oh, oh, that God, last, oh. I'm just like, you know, the last corner <laughs> yeah. of the fight too. And he's just getting beat. I'm like, no, it well, really, especially the second one when he was getting tagged and all yeah. of a sudden he knocks him out. You know, it was incredible. But, you know, I also think we're at a big crossroads with that heavyweight division. I think you sit there, you got that gone kid that's coming up. You've mm-hmm. got Alexander Volkov. I mean, Derek Lewis, I-, I love him. I don't know if the UFC does because he just keeps throwing a wrench into everything. <laughs> I mean, he's still sitting at three, knocks out Curtis yeah. Blades. He's already fought Volkov. Do you want him there? And then the elephant in the room is John Jones and he's yeah, on Instagram right. walking around at 245 looking as jacked as ever and as quick as ever. So, um, you know, what does the UFC want? I, I, they have a rooting interest in all of this. Did they want Stipe to win? Boom. Then you got your John Jones matchup. It's potentially the, the fight of the decade. It's one of the biggest fights, if not the biggest in the UFC heavyweight division of all time. Mm. Bam. Ninganu wins how can you give him John Jones and, and let Stipe not try to fight back for his belt, and especially yeah. in a trilogy match where they would have potentially each won one, but you can't keep John Jones on the sidelines. That guy moved up to heavyweight. I can almost guarantee you with a guarantee that he will fight for the title as his first one, right. too much money, too much stuff involved. So um, there's a lot that goes into it, you know, and there's a, there's a lot on the line. And then the other thing is how long does Stipe want to keep doing this? The guy's already established himself as the greatest heavyweight of all time. Um, you know, he's getting up there in age. We talk so much about, uh, how much he loves being a dad with his daughter and still being a, you know, being a firefighter, that guy's got other things, you know? So I wonder how much longer this is going to go. So I, like I said, I'm just, I'm nervous. I, it's not, I'm afraid that he's going to lose. I'm just like, you know, that, yeah. that, that anxiousness mm-hmm. to see it, you know, I'm super bummed that the Ortega Volkanovsky fight got, got canned because COVID and that honestly, like I said, I was looking forward to the Stipe fight anyway, but that on that car was money because Brian Ortega is one of my favorite fighters. I think he's going to be a champion one day. So to have that scrapped is, is sucks, but I'll, I'll still be locked in Saturday night, still waiting to see, uh, to steep a getting it done. And like I said, as far as that recipe goes, it wouldn't shock me guys to be the complete 180. Last time he kept taking him down, wearing him out. This time won't be shocked me if he picks him apart, not necessarily like, Hey, I own him, but just on the outside, pep, you know, bam, 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 hitting him, hitting him, hitting him and go from there. Any other fight on the card? Because there's been several fights kind of scrapped from this card on UFC 260 due to COVID or or injuries. Is there another fight that people should be looking out for, whether on the main card, once the pay-per-view really gets going, 
or you know, kind of the, some of those early fights that you catch on the prelims. E yeah, the prelims on on ESPN or even ESPN Plus for free. I'm gonna pull it up, guys, because I want to make sure I don't miss one. So obviously, you know, Sugar Sean O'Malley is 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 an up and coming kind of guy, and he's coming off injury. You know, Woodley's had a fall. Vincent uh, Luque is, is is a really big one. Uh, he's an upcomer at welterweight. Um, I would say probably the Woodley uh, Luque fight. Um, it would have easily been the Volkanovski, you know, or take a fight because that would have been huge. But probably Woodley, uh, Woodley and Luke K will be a good one too. Uh, Matt, I'm going to get you out on here uh, for this. Mm. Uh, you finally watched Justice League. I did. Now there's no spoilers, but is no, it that, every? That's a, that's a rule of the show. And, and you that's know what? A rule, you know of the show. show. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you and I, I'm sure we're going to talk about this tomorrow whenever I see you. But yeah. <laughs> did it live up to your expectations? You know, it did, and I don't say this negatively, okay. but it didn't exceed my expectations either, which Fair. is fine because I had very high expectations sure. for it. And sometimes it's actually better to just get your expectations met. And I think that's what happened with this. It had the elements I was looking for. It had the little, uh, you know, Easter eggs, the little kind of right. you know, wrap some things up. And you just saw what Snyder was trying to go for the whole time which also kind of makes you sit there and say like, what the hell was Joss Whedon doing? I mean, like, <laughs> I, I came did, in, you know, I, Matt, I came in here fuming. I, I, I told them, I was yeah. like, I'm not going to say the things that I said, but I was like, you know, Joss oh. Whedon shouldn't be around a, a camera ever again. Like I mean, never. You see, you see like how good this was. And it was almost like, you couldn't finish that. Like you just couldn't <laughs> easily take these little things and just be like, okay. Mm. And I know, you know, the one thing I'll say to this and uh, you know, I'm sure, like I said, we'll talk about it, Nick, and, and yeah. I'm gonna actually going to have a bad pod coming up this week to talk about it. Nice. Don't let Warner brothers escape this too. Cause they got their hands deep into this and they said, mm. no, we got to take this over and we got to help and all that. And uh, there's been some things about the guy that runs Warner brothers. People aren't happy about his direction and creative differences and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, blame Joss Whedon, but we can also put a lot of blame on Warner Brothers. But hey, no we got it. It's finally here. And now the countdown is on to Godzilla and Kong, which is what? I can't wait. 10 days away. Yeah, no, I, I, thought it was coming, I, I thought it was coming out this week, no? I thought the 31st. I could be wrong. I think it's the 28th. Soon. I think it comes nope, out. Huh? Yeah. Even so, better. hey, yeah. I mean, I, Even better. Uh, I'm honestly, there. all for it. I, I can't wait for that. Who, who do you got in yeah. that one? Well, I mean, obviously, I again, I, I haven't seen this. So this isn't a spoiler alert. I'm going to go with they fight each other, and then eventually something else is going to show up. Everyone mm -hmm. keeps saying Mechanic Godzilla. Just, we'll yeah. see if we'll see, and then they got to come together and join forces and and then take out something. So that's what I'm so I'm hoping for. Nobody wants. I mean. I loved Civil War, the Avengers, you know, one. Right. But again, mm. nobody runs to see the good guys fight each other. Godzilla and Kong are both good, so you don't want to see them fight each other. But I'll watch because I heard that I heard the battleship destroyer scenes twenty eight minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> and just duking it out for twenty eight minutes for a half an hour. I'm in for that. I'm I'm all about Kong with the uh, with the battle axe that he has, you know, in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. I'm. You know, that's a, that's a spine off of Godzilla. Oh, that's yeah. Where he gets it from. Oh, yeah. yeah. So can't it's, wait it's, for that. It's, it's, yeah, and I'm excited to see. You know, Fontana, since you're not my teacher anymore, you can't take credit away from me. But I don't know that I'm going to get HBO. <laughs> I can talk to some people. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, then I'm just not going to. I'm just not going to say that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to. I'll, I'll watch Justice League. Need an HBO logger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. HBO yeah. Max logger. You know, yeah. now they're cutting down on Netflix login, so I can only imagine HBO Max. My family's going to be pissed. <laughs> How do you pick? How do you pick? So right. it's like, obviously my wife and I have it, but then do I cut my nieces off? Probably not. That's a jerk <laughs> thing to do. So then it's like, well, then their grandfather, my father-in-law might have to get cut off. And then it's just like, eh, you oh, know, yeah. I don't know. I might have to like, there might have to be like a battle Royale in the backyard or something. <laughs> you know, the winner gets the HBO login. I already know I can cut my mom out because while we oh, while we have a profile for her, she never uses it. Oh, I've, okay. That's... I've I've shown her we've shown her how there to use go. these stuff all the time, and she's like the first one that can go because she just thought you were just ruthless. I yeah, hitting her in the kneecaps or I'm something. Glad you got to plan it out anyway. Right. You yeah. Know? Thought about it. You're ready hey, to go though. You know, my mom always said, you know, you got to go big. So <laughs> do it. Do what you feels right. So there you go. She wouldn't have a problem yeah. with it. But Fontana, we do appreciate you yeah, jumping you, on for a few no moments problem, here tonight, anytime. and. uh, we look forward to talking with you soon and uh, enjoy uh, enjoy some uh, some time on the airwaves and absolutely. hopefully the rest of this Browns off season we can have some fun with together as well. Absolutely. Looking forward to the fight. Appreciate you guys having me on. I'm always here for you, boys. Thanks, Matt.
Thank you. That was Matt Fontana of ESPN Cleveland. He hosts ESPN Cleveland tonight as part of their new lineup from 5 to 7 with Michael Bohm as his producer on that show. You can catch Great him. Great dude. He, he, Great dude. Yeah, he fantastic. Really like I said, he yeah, was, I was, I was going to say, he was your teacher he at, was. Uh, at OMS. I wasn't. I, the only like the only fun question I could have asked, but I didn't really want people to kind of get a behind the scenes. Like, how was I as a student, Matt? Like, let him know. Like, how <laughs> no, I, I, I think you, you did know? the right call by was, not, you know, like, like doing that maybe Be, uh because yeah. i knowing fontana like i do he would avoid the truth <laughs> and really make me he would really you know oh, kind of no. you know put me in the <laughs> put you in the grinder there, yeah there you go yeah so but a lot of good stuff with him there and you got to looking at the UFC 260 stuff with stipe we know that hometown boy he's big browns fan he's all about the area northeast Ohio. I, I like how you call him the flavor of the town, which he absolutely is. I mean, he yeah. he's the go-to dude. He is, and it's just that's what at least in this area, there's there are diehard UFC fans like Fontana. You and I kind of oh, yeah. we watch when we can. I'm starting to get into it a little bit. You know, like yeah. I, I have ESPN Plus, so you know, whatever comes mm-hmm. out on a Friday, Saturday nights, Kelly and I typically watch it. You know, a right. little bit of it. And, you know, then the main card starts, and then you got to pay the sixty five dollars. Right. You know, like. Pandemic time, boys. You know, yeah. but, but we do have the stimmy, so yeah. you know, like maybe maybe I can contact on that one. You I'm know. definitely watching it this coming up week. Yes, like, no doubt in my the, mind. I'm definitely catching Stepe. The sixty five dollars is worth it for Stepe. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I one interesting point that Fontana brought up though is Stepe was able to wear down Ninganu, and being yeah. such so built as he is, he he said it best. You know, with all those muscles, you, you still got to be able to get oxygen. Stipe was able to kind of be a little bit faster, a little bit better in the the cardio, yeah, to kind of wear him down to then you know kind of control so many rounds to have that un- unanimous decision. Both these guys usually knock people out. Twenty of t- uh, Stipe's twenty three wins is by knockout. Yeah. Eleven of Ninganu's fifteen wins by knockout. So. Two heavyweights that punch and, punch real hard. And what's funny is, you know, whenever they fought each other, it went the distance. Went the distance. <laughs> so it's like that. So you don't know what to expect, but, you know, yeah. anything can really happen in this fight. I think Ninganu's one kind of adjustment from the last fight, I wonder if he upped his cardio or, you know, kind of that, you know, that I mean, longer lasting. still 260, so, I mean, you know, if he has to cut down to, you know, whatever the weight amount is, I, yeah, I can't remember I, off the top of my head, but... Do the heavyweights have a... I, they, they do. They I think, do? I think it is, like, 265, I, okay. I think, is is the amount there for him. Okay. So, I'm sure that he probably had to cut down, mm-hmm. might even want to cut down even more than that, but, I mean, we're, we're going to find out here on Friday, I believe, so, but, yeah, I mean, it's steep A, and that, that's the one question, you know, we, we we didn't ask Matt, but uh, does this fight affect his legacy going forward? Right. I mean, he's already pound for pound the greatest, you know, uh, heavyweight fighter yeah. of all time, you know, for for UFC, at least in our mind. And we're from Cleveland, so we're, mm. we're going to say that no matter what. But I truly do believe a lot of people feel that way as well. Uh, but so if he were to lose to Ngannou, and I'm not trying to throw mm. any bad juju out there or anything like that. But if he were to lose, would that affect him? What do you think about that? I don't think so because okay. he was he has the most title defenses consecutively with right. those three. No one was able to do more than two before Stipe was able to defend it then. And now, you know, he lost it and was able to win it back from DC. Yeah. And been able to defend it. So I think it just this weekend would just add to his legacy. I you know, just listening to the experts, he has been the greatest. He's kind of been seen as the greatest, but I don't know. You know, it's it's one of those things where you kind of have to see how it plays out. Yeah. Because Ngannou it has the hardest recorded punch in UFC history. So either he upped his cardio in case it has to go the distance, or he's just going to come out and you've seen some of those fights end in like 10, 15 seconds because someone has this massive like Superman punch or oh, like yeah. jump off the something cage, crazy. something crazy. <laughs> right. He's either going for the knockout right away or, you know, there's going to be, if you start, if you see in that first round some strategy from both fighters, you could see one going at least three rounds. Yeah. I, 
it's a heavyweight fight. You expect heavyweight blows. Ooh, I mean, yeah. you you expect some haymakers being going down. Um, it, obviously, they they're gonna want to try and come out. You know, hell's bells, just go all out for yeah. it. Um, and, and then they'll probably get tired after that if you know they make it out of the round. Yeah, uh, their form, but it, it's gonna be a real exciting fight. Obviously, we're all all right. for Stipe. So yeah, I, I'm guaranteeing you right now we're gonna send out the replay of this you know mm-hmm. exact conversation. Conversation, uh, probably Thursday, Friday, uh, here for us. But you know, Stepe. I mean, obviously, Cleveland's behind oh, you. We're you know, we're ride and die with ride or die. One hundred percent. Cleveland till we die. You know, MGK, and he rocks to MGK when he oh, comes yeah. out. Till I die. I, that's that's the one thing. Like I always liked Stepe, anyways. Yeah. But once I was able to actually have the money to pay for a fight and watch it, yeah. and hearing that as he comes out to that song, then he fights with I, Miles. Yeah. You know, like, he, like, but he, he gets us. He, he is Cleveland. He is Cleveland. Yep. He's from here. He bleeds here, and he gives back to here. And, yeah, the UFC hasn't found a way to market him. Yeah, he's not this guy that's going to be on the mic or anything. Yeah. But he goes out there, professional, does his job, retains belts, gets wins, knocks people out, and it is going to be a heck of a fight. No matter what happens, we will always support you steep a and uh good luck this weekend out there in vegas at ufc 260 kind of switching gears here you know we we did talk browns a little bit any before we do switch gears any kind of notes or or kind of little tidbits that fontana Mm -hmm. gave us there that that you think kind of maybe change your perspective on what you've seen in free agency already because fontana is one of those guys he's in the pro football focus he's got the analytical side he's got the football side he's one of those like minds that like unsung minds football wise that people need to listen more to any little yeah (laughs) any little fontana knows what he's talking about he he really does and he's in with the people that know what they're talking about as well uh and not just at the state but all yeah, over. Right. Uh, I, I do like the fact that Matt's mindset, you know, even with all these free agent ads, mm. hasn't changed his perspective of this Cleveland Browns team. Right. Going forward, he already knows, you know, we're, we're going to be a playoff contender, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, winning the division. That's like the number one thing that the Browns really need to focus yes. on. You win that division, then you get the home playoff game. COVID is is starting to go away. It's starting to decrease. Yeah. Hopefully that opens up the op, you know the opportunity of having home playoff games, uh, you know, 50% capacity, full capacity, you know, one can dream uh, there for us, but I think that you know him saying that his mindset hasn't changed sort of puts a little bit into my mind because I've always thought, you know, we were one of the, you know, top contenders mm. along with KC in the AFC. Uh, it, I mean, it, we're not the only team making moves. You know, like there's other guys out there that are, are doing a solid job at re-signing their free agents and getting free agents to come to them. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Oldak, Paw, you know, mm. uh, 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 producer of the mm. Really Big Show and Paw and Wild Colt, uh, you know, host of that. He was saying about the Patriots. Now, Mike Rizzo and I, we gave a lot of crap for that. And Chris, I'm sorry if you're listening uh, uh, here for us. I, I know that yeah. we gave you a lot of crap for that, but the Patriots have made some moves. They were 7-9 and nine last year uh, with terrible quarterback play. Right. Cam Newton just wasn't himself. And I honestly don't think that he's ever going to be himself again. Uh, but they've been making moves. So you see them. You see the Dolphins are mm. a young, up-and-coming team. They're going to do better. Carson Wentz is now with the Colts. I don't think Carson Wentz is God's greatest gift to earth, you know, like like everyone thought he was in Philly a couple years ago, but he is with the offensive coordinator, Frank Wright, who's now the head coach with the Colts. You could see them make a turnaround, uh, you know, Darius Leonard-led defense. So there's a lot of other teams, not just KC and the Browns, who I think are great, but, you know, Buffalo, Buffalo was there. You know, if Josh Allen, uh, you know, has more Mm. of a Josh Allen type day, maybe it's different, but. Yeah, and it's, I mean, the title of our show today kind of says it all. The Browns have always been off-season darlings. They are right. like, but it never seems to have that football-focused purpose. Yeah, this team was 
when Andrew Barry and Paul D. Podesta got back together, everybody thought like, oh, we're going back to analytics. Analytics. That's like the that's the trigger word here in Cleveland. That and process. Yeah. Those are like those those two those, words. Those are the words. Those are the words. And I'm sure I just triggered a lot of people by even just saying them. And yeah. people are flipping over chairs right now, flipping tables. Uh, it's like you know, yeah. WWE cage fly. <laughs> cage match. <laughs> but like <laughs> I, I gotta go home and watch some WWE because WrestleMania is coming up. I may have to Oh, is it? I may have to give us a little uh review preview the 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 week we come back because I think the week we're planning to come back, yeah. that's like the second day. They're going back to two days again, okay. like they did last year. Yeah. Trying to have fans there, but not having too many, but giving enough fans a chance to yeah. be there. So, and since the card so long and always went to like 1 or 2 p.m. or Jeez. 1 a.m., like, well, I, I never got sleep that night. That was ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm glad they went to two nights. But for the Browns, you know, they thought it was, everybody thought it was going to be analytics. Yeah. But they've found a way to pair Mary Analytics with football moves, football focus. And that is the most important piece. Just like they want to marry the run with the pass, as uh, Coach Stefanski says. They, they have been able to marry, so far, analytics with football focus and having success on the field. And I guess if I were to answer the question, mm -hmm. have my expectations changed? I'm glad Fontana said his haven't, because mine haven't. Mine, my expectations for this team... It's not, I won't say it's Super Bowl or bust. Right. But it's, you better be on the cusp, if not at least in that game. So you're saying, super? can can I be free to say that Super Bowl contender? Super Bowl contender okay. is my expectation. It was before, and it is now, because I expected Andrew Barry to focus on the defense and make the moves. Now, maybe he's done more than I thought he would. Maybe and I think, I think that's fair. I think I, we I, all agree with that. Fair to say he exceeded expectations, but it's, it's what you come to expect in Andrew Barry. And maybe not every move is going to be great, and there's going to be, there's going to be sometimes that you can be critical of it. Sure. But he's done enough to trust him. I just want everybody to, to remember, even though you trust someone, you can still question some of their moves you can yeah. still kind of have those conversations work that all out and try to it's going to be difficult for browns fans and yeah. it's going to be difficult for me i'm telling you right now <laughs> so i'm basically talking to myself into this camera right now temper the excitement make sure that while this offseason all they really can do is talk and make moves like we said last year the focus is going to be don't just talk about it be about it a hundred percent with you right there i right before we wrap up and head to the mm. ncaa yeah. uh stuff here for us i do want to know and, and you don't have to give me an exact number but you did say super bowl contender you mm. the rounds are a super bowl contender right. how many teams are in that contention <sighs> and, and we don't have to go through the entire right. league but do you think like are, like top six top eight i'm thinking I was going to say five or six. Okay. Yeah, top, I would say top six, okay. honestly. So like Tampa Bay, KC. Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo, Green Bay. Uh, would you put the Rams there? I mean, they just lost two of their – I mean, we snagged a couple of their yeah. starters on defense. You know, you take pieces away, defense. and right. who knows what Stafford's going to be able to do. Like, as good of a quarterback as he is, yeah. you know, he's towards the tail end of his career – they're banking, they're investing everything in Matt Stafford, kind of one off, get us there over yeah. these next two years. And they're years still paying the like contract. 25 million to Jared Goff to play yeah. in Detroit. It that's that's ridiculous. And that's the reason why they couldn't afford John Johnson or Troy Hill. That's the reason right there. Right. So But I may expend, extend that to like top eight because you gotta you still gotta talk about the Ravens. I, like you know, I, AFC I North say, is, is a juggernaut I was in gonna itself. Say, and I know a lot of people say, Well, if you make the playoffs, you're a Super Bowl contender. I get that, but like Chicago made the playoffs. Right. Do you view them as a no? They, they just lucked it. They themselves. were what we thought they were. <laughs> exactly. They lucked themselves into it because the NFC, mm. let's just yeah. be honest, was a crap show last year. You know, I, I want to say worse, but, you know, we're, yeah. we're on here. So yeah. I, it, it's another rule of the show. That is a rule. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, so let's let's hop into the <laughs> yeah. NCAA, which yeah. is brackets have been busted for and we're three days into it. So yeah. we still got another day of the uh, of the second round. It's just uh. before I get into what we need to about <sighs> the uh, NCAA yeah. brackets, 
kind of picking teams and things like that. I want to, on a serious note, just for a brief moment, I want to address two things. First off, the people going into the direct messages, the DMs of EJ Liddell or any player or any public figure that you look up to, that you or that you say you look up to, or that you say you root for, and to not just to not either support them or, you know, tweet out your thoughts in a general sense, like, oh my gosh, I'm upset that Buckeyes lost. How can you not hit your free throws? You're the best in the Big Ten. Uh, you know, Coach Holtman, what are you doing? Why aren't you putting these guys in better situations? C.J. Walker, why aren't you? Why are you going 0 of 7 towards the end of the game? But you go into one person or certain people's direct messages and you take it to the extreme of death threats and more and i'm not going to get into what was said because it is disgusting it is deplorable that is not that is the terrible side of social media i always say and this is the reason i wanted to address this i always say at the end of the at the end of the show don't let anyone anyone ever tell you it's just a game there's a reason I say that. It's because my family always said it's just a game because the, I always was upset if my team lost. So I was really excited if my team won Sure. because sports means a lot to me. There's other people that are passionate about other things, art, dance, finance, whatever, that you something that you get very passionate about that matters a lot in life. But there's one thing that does not, that sports does not matter more than, and that is life. These guys, the reason why sports means a lot to me, it means a lot more to guys like EJ Liddell. He's trying to make a life out of basketball or use that platform to go into something else he's passionate about. Just like all those other athletes on the men's, women's side, doesn't matter. All the coaches, they are in it for more than just your entertainment. Yes, at the end of the day, it, it is entertainment, but their life matters more than you hiding behind some crap avatar picture, the egg on Twitter, just so that you can spew the hate that is truly in your heart. I pray for those that have that much hate in their heart that you're willing to do that. And the fact that Ohio State is looking into this and investigating, I hope they find these people and justice is served because that is not acceptable. It should not happen. On the NCAA side, the differences between the men and the women, their resources in the bubble. You are putting these kids at risk. Already had VCU get test positive already inside the bubble for COVID-19. So you have kind of cut them off from a lot of different things. They already get their names, money made off of that that they don't see. All of that, all of those types of things, the corrupt NCAA, we're not going to get into right now. But the differences in the weight room, the food, the amenities, the swag bags. I'm glad that Oregon women's team brought about brought this to light and everybody's having a conversation about this because there is a men's tournament and a women's tournament. It's not the NCAA tournament and the women's NCAA tournament. It's right. the men's and the women's NCAA tournaments. You got part one with the men. You got part two with the women. Both matter the same. And to only give them neoprene 80s jazzer size looking weights on a tree with a bunch of rooms still left and crap practice floors. Unacceptable. And I'm glad people are doing something about it. I, I'm I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I told you before the show, I thought it was a joke. I, I thought it was like a joke TikTok thing, you know, that was going around. I had no idea. You mm. know, they showed all the guys stuff and all the girls stuff. And I was like, okay, that's, it, it's funny because like, it's so true in this society and that, da, 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 da. But then they were like, no, this is real. Like, mm. this is real life. Like, and, and as soon as I saw that, I instantly, I looked at my wife and I was like, ah. Uh, like I was stunned. I was like, and that isn't it, a, that's not right. Obviously like that is hellaciously wrong. Right. You know? Uh, and, and I just, I couldn't believe like that actually happened. Uh, the, the swag bag that, you know, the guys mm. got compared to the women. I mean, it, the, the women got like a towel, you know, they got like a towel and like the, the carry on book bag thing. Like that was it. The guy, the, the, the guy's stuff was like all filled out on the bed. It was, 
it, it's crazy the mm-hmm. fact that this is still going on. And and we say it almost on a weekly basis. I can't believe this happened or I can't believe that yeah. happened. Because I think you and I are both see it from the same light of like, why? Like, why is this stuff still happening? This is 2021. We need to be an evolved society. Uh, you know, it's it's ridiculous. And then the EJ Liddell stuff. I mean, you can call out Chris Holtman's job. You can, you know, like if you want to say that he's on the hot seat or that you mm. believe that he shouldn't be coaching because of the job that he's done and mm. over the last couple of years of having subpar performances, uh, you know, not making it past the second round. Okay. I'll a hundred percent with all of that. EJ Liddell probably had the greatest game of his life the other day, 23 points, I think 14 or 12 rebounds, right. something along the lines of that. Did he, you know, a couple, did he miss a couple of shots. Missed, did he turn the ball a, over? Sure. Yes. That happens. But you can talk about those but, bad habits, right? But don't make it personal. The, the fact in some of the stuff that I saw that, that was out there. And I just want to wrap it up with this. I just can't was, stop shaking my head. I, like, it's, I hope that the, that, you know, Ohio state, the, 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 you know, whoever's involved in this, if it's the FBI, because some of the stuff that they said was unbelievable. Um, I hope that they find out who these guys were. I hope that they lose their jobs. I hope that their yeah. bosses see it and go, I don't want this here. Like you say this stuff, like you kiss your mother with that mouth. Like yeah. that, I, I don't want to see them ever succeed in life at that point in time. Because if you type out that sort of, if you want to be the Twitter, you know, troll warrior, mm. you keyboard warrior guy, go right ahead. If, but uh, like, I hope you lose your job for, for saying all those hellacious things. And I hope bad things do happen to you. Like I'm just being straight up honest yeah. with you. Uh, so, you know, there, there you go for that. There's a reason why, they hide behind those crappy no avatars because no they know that if they if they're found out by their job because that's something that people look at now is social media they will lose their job yeah. and if there's something that they need help with seek the help or if people around them that care about them notice something yeah get them the help they need but that kind of stuff is not acceptable as soon as you make it personal these guys are giving their guys and gals are giving their all in these sports yeah. and they're trying to make a living for themselves, whether through the sport or using that sport as a platform to something else. And you cannot, you cannot value life over anything else. Life is always at the top. One final thing before we go to kind of end on a, on a fun note here. And I've been making one of your buddies, Paulus, wait for this. I don't know. That, I don't know. I know that you know what you did. But I don't know that you know that I know what you did. So your buddy Mark hit me up in DMs. We're talking about DMs. This oh, is yeah. kind of a fun way to do it. That uh, a certain level of credits were placed on the Ohio State game. And then additionally, yeah, yeah. on uh, in, in regards to my Cleveland State Vikings as well. Peter, would you ever, if you, if... Sports betting becomes allowed in Ohio. Would you ever bet, uh, like, make a bet that involved being on or against the team that you rooted for? Ooh, that would be very difficult. But you'd have to think about it, wouldn't you? Uh, you know, that's, if the spread but, mm, was that's the, so large that's that the, you knew you were going pro- to win. Well, that's the problem because when you start talking about like the spreads, yeah, you know. It's like, yeah, I might think uh, my team's going to win, but not by the spread. So I can I can understand that. It's thank you. But yeah, the problem with sports betting is you have to kind of separate that from your fandom. Is I, is is what it is. Preach, and, Peter. I'm just going to let and, you talk. <laughs> and what you guys and what you guys were talking about before with the you know the NCAA and everything, you want to know what the problem is right there is what we're talking about right now. Betting, it's money. That's that's I, why there's a difference between men and women's sports. The what, men because brings the, in the money. Sure. But I have to say, I agree with you, Nick. I saw the picture of the weights. Yeah. I thought it was weight, I thought it was a joke. The weight mm-hmm. room. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought that was just someone trying to be funny. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, I get, you know, they they, they get the swag bags them like, and everyone wants it. They give them like seven stuff. seven yeah. sets of weights That's and like ri- yoga mats. That was ri- like, and that was ridiculous. Was- I mean, I understand oh. these companies. They want to get their stuff in front with the guys because it's going to be more people tune into that. Yeah, I mean, I, it just is the way it is. I hate to say it. When we did when we did basketball, no, high I, school basketball, mm. the boys basketball 
It's not three times the not, viewership. I, I, I get that, but it's not right. And like, I'm not it, saying it's right. No, I'm just it, saying, but that's but that's the reality. No, of it. I, how did I, you turn me trying to have some fun with <laughs> Paulus into I, another philosophical well, conversation? Because, because, yeah, because, and, well, you asked, and the thing is, it's, and, that's, it's and that's and that's fair. It, yeah. I understand everything's all about the money. Okay, like yeah. we we all agree right. with that. But the fact is, it's not right. I'm not saying. You know, it's and, right. and like and like, if you want to bet on games, if you want to like, and I I know where you're coming That's from. That's going to make it worse, I think. I mean, well, if you think about it, why? yeah, people are they're invested in their teams. Sure. But think of the people that are so PO'd because they lost a lot of money yeah. on that Ohio State game. And I'm not, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm not saying it's right. But I think the more you have sports betting and all that other stuff, yeah, you, it's mm. just of, of course the, the, the reason worms. why the guys were calling you know him an mm. mf and blankety blank is because they lost money. Oh yeah, you yeah. know, or or they're super fans, mm, which just yeah. means that no, you're they probably lost idiot. money. You know, no <laughs> doubt they probably lost money. But the thing is, is it's still not right, and and yeah. one and what, it's not right about you know the the women not getting a, a proper weight room or proper meals uh, compared to the guys and. And it's it sure as hell isn't right to call out EJ Liddell for once again having like the his his best game ever in the NCAA tournament and 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 reversing that on because he had a couple of turnovers like mm. it, the the guys that were hitting him up you know calling him mfers and 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 blankety blanks and everything like that it, it, tell me that those guys are perfect because I don't believe you. You know, like they go throughout their day, I guarantee you, screwing up on a consistent <laughs> basis, and no one's going to call them a blankety blank. Right. It's too wrong. easy to hide behind the keyboard. It, it, that's I mean, that's yeah, the point, though. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. It's and hot. that's, hey, you know, it's easy to say stuff when you can say it. Say it in you, your mama's you, basement 10,000 miles away. And it's you, so and you much know easier. No one's going to gonna punch that. you in the face for it. <laughs> And you know what? People need to get punched in the face every yep. once in a while. I, I, I think that would probably solve a yeah. lot of problems, yeah. honestly. The wake up calls no are, doubt. are needed, but uh, you know, it's like you Sorry, said. By, by the way, Mark no. is Mark is tuned in, so shout yeah. out Mark. Like I see I, him I see him joined right. on Twitter. So right. give me one second, yeah, Mark. Yeah, get back onto get, it. Get one second here, Mark. I I do agree with you guys though. It is all of this stuff is unfair. It's for these you know, guys to hide behind keyboards yeah. or whatever, but also the differences in men's and women's sports. There's two things that kind of show what the reality is. First off, Coach Muffet McGraw of the Baylor women's program, who's built a powerhouse there at Baylor. Her comments about the discrepancies basically said that what we've had to come to expect yeah. as women, as as athletes, even as much as the NCAA doesn't well, take wrong. care of it, it is. And it's 2021. They shouldn't. They should be expecting more. Everyone should be able to expect more and more opportunities because they work as hard for it, if not harder, and they should be able to expect it. The other right. one is, you look at the soccer program here in the U- U.S. Which one's better, men's or women's? Oh, hands down, women's. Women's yeah. has always been at the forefront of the world soccer picture and winning World Cups or contending for World Cups. Men have not gotten anywhere close. The current U.S. men's coach, Greg Berhalter, said, these guys need to look to the women's team for inspiration and for a sense of what it truly means. Some of them are trying to say, the young guys are trying to say, they're going to go win 2026, the World Cup in 2026. Mm -hmm. He's tempering expectations by saying, do you know how that's got to happen? Look to... The women on the other side, they've been doing it. We haven't. We got to prove ourselves. They've already proven it. They are the better team, and yet they don't get the same amount of pay or anywhere even close. It's not fair, and it needs a change. Right. On a fun note, because we're going over like we always do, we always get in these philosophical question conversations, and it's great. Love it. Yeah. I, we got to find a way to get that philosophical conversation <laughs> off the top so we have the full hour to talk about them. But... Mark wanted me to like call you out for it because he said that. Of course you, he did because he's n- no. They're, they're, oh, that was close. That was close. Broke, or almost broke a rule of the show. That was close. There was a there was a allegation that you don't know players on the on the team outside of EJ Liddell. Yeah. Um. Can you, how many players can you name on that team? I can name EJ Liddell and uh, Washington. It was Dwayne Washington, right? Yeah. 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 That, yeah. Chris Holtman. I, I know I know three guys. And once again, 
Ohio mm-hmm. State basketball, that's not my calling, okay? Yeah. I root for them because it's Ohio State, and, and I root for them, just as I would if Ohio State made the the Frozen Four, you know, in, in mm-hmm. hockey. If, if their team made it, I don't know any of the players, but I root for them, okay? I bet on Oral Roberts with the points, okay? I expected Ohio State to win. Okay, I had them in my final four. Hmm. Okay, well, some some group messages would would uh, I, say that uh, someone was very happy about earning some credits. On I it. made yeah. seventeen credits, <laughs> <laughs> like on a twenty on a twenty credit limit. Well, someone you were really excited about it. I, I don't know. Of course, I I doubled my credit limit. <laughs> you know, so of course I did. But then I made a parlay. Uh, and, and I lost all the money, so I made a parlay and I put that seventeen on on uh, on I'm sorry on Cleveland State to 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 lose by less than twenty so points. So it wasn't enough to jinx my Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> I had, you had to come after my Vikings. You had to come after my Vikings. And, and and I have Mark on here going. You rooted for them. You bet against them. Excuses. I have receipts. Mark, I also have receipts that I have OSU. You going to the final four, and I lost that. So do I. So, like, my <laughs> the point behind all of this is that I bet on Oral Roberts with 20 points. Okay, man, I got some dudes, and they team. beat the Buckeyes by three. I knew the Buckeyes were gonna be in a close game. Like, I, I told Tyler that day, like, if you're gonna place some credits down where you were at, go and place a 20 credit limit on. On Oral Roberts because I knew that they w- it would be a dogfight. Okay, mm-hmm. I knew it, and I was right. My issue is is I was a little too right. Okay, and that that dogfight ended up going into overtime, and they couldn't score in in, in overtime. Okay, if you want to call me a jinx. Okay, <laughs> as as I have Mark saying, Nick is the jinx king. If you want to call me a jinx, you know what. 100% that's on me. I even said last week, I, I made the oral joke. I said, yeah. you know, uh, no, OSU isn't going to lose to a guy. You know, yeah, sounds like a, a guy that thought Ohio State was going to run away with it, didn't it? Th- that's what I'm saying. I thought Ohio State was going to win the game. Not run away with it, but win the game within a 15 and a half point limit. Hey. If you can sleep at night saying you're a big Ohio State fan Nick and yet you, br- money you over, broke. Nick prefers money over championships. You're a son of a bitch, Mark. That's oh. what you are. That was a hard B on that one. Uh, you know what? Like, You know I, what else is a bitch? What? Karma. <laughs> so it came back at you and you lost your money. Well so, played. Well played. And, and you know what? If well, we're going with those words. <laughs> my whole point is, is that I, once again, I vote. Voted that uh, you know I had Ohio State going to my Final Four. My brackets busted. I had Illinois winning it all. I had Ohio State losing to Illinois in the Final Four. Guess what? That side of the bracket mm. done. Like I'm, I've already lost money, er, you know, credits to Mark. Yeah. So it, it doesn't even matter. You know what? Like I. I I didn't come away with anything, Mark. You're acting like I bet my house and mortgage on this game. I threw a twenty dollar or twenty credit limit on everything. So why don't we just calm down with all these accusations? Next time he'll be betting against the Browns in the Super Bowl. Screw you. <laughs> Screw that would never happen. And unless the point spread is way oh, too gee. good. <laughs> oh my, he had to leave that door open. Well, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> that day that the Browns get in the Super Bowl and they lose. For First person look at as why Nick Paulus reach out to him at C L E underscore Paulus. How about yeah, we get there let's, first? Let's get there first. Let's get there first. Let's get there first. You know, <laughs> these I said that I wanted March Madness back and I didn't yeah. care if my bracket busted. All these teams like Loyola Chicago, Abilene Christian, Oral Roberts, they said, Hey Kevin. You want in March Madness? Yep. Hold my beer. I got it for you. And now I'm not so happy with my bracket. But at least I can sleep at night knowing I didn't place credits on teams that I root for. Thank you. And with that being said, that'll wrap it up for this edition of The Voice of the Land. Next week, we have a big show for you. May not be as 
long as as a, as a show, but we do it's gonna have be a quick preview. Going to be a quick preview of Major League Baseball's opening day, and a very special guest from the Cleveland Indians will join us. Who you'll have to find out. We will give you. Uh, we'll send out a video. What to, a tease! What a tease! You'll have to tune in to find out. Maybe we will give a little promo video later this week. But a big show a big guest coming on next week we want to thank tonight matt fontana of espn cleveland for joining us this evening but for matt fontana out there with his dog alvin and, and wife and everybody <laughs> and for our my brother nick paulus who bets on teams he roots for Screw and you, our producer extraordinaire peter Tellup. i am kevin all reminding all of you stay safe out there for True reasons don't let anyone ever tell you it's just a game, but value life over everything else. And we love you all. Truly love you all. 3,000. We will see you all next week. OH! I-O!